गुड इवनिंग एंड हरे कृष्णा वेलकम टू अ कॉन्वर्सेशन विद गोविंद दास ऑन लाइफ लेसन फ्रॉम आर एपिक्स टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग द ब्रूटल किलिंग ऑफ द वैलोरस अभिमान्यू द सन ऑफ अर्जुना एंड सुभद्रा इट इज अ बिग इमोशनल लॉस फॉर द पांडवास मच लाइक दैट we also experience sometimes emotional losses in our life how do we respond to these situations is what we learn today from govinda das prabhu ji is an author he is a thought leader and an exponent of the relevance of sanatan dharma in our life we would like to invite you also into the conversation uh, by asking questions you can tap on the icon uh, raise your hand at the bottom towards the end of this conversation with these words uh, over to you prabhu ji thank you om agyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha namo vishnu padaya krishna prashtaya bhutale shrimati bhakti vidanta swami niti namine नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेषुण्यवादी पश्चात्तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासरी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वैलर ऑफ अभिमन्यू अ क्लैश बिटवीन लॉस एंड लव Mahabharat. When we when we study or hear the stories, one of the question is always raised about the brutal death of Abhimanyu. Hundreds of people ask this question. If Krishna was so dear to Abhimanyu, then why he did not protect Abhimanyu? why would he allow abhimanyu to be killed by the six maharathis in a brutal way right so this question in regards to abhimanyu not being protected or exactly like abhimanyu there would be hundreds of good people valorous people you know when they are killed from the from the very pure statistical perspective that is almost like a murder from the kauravas perspective right so it is but natural that we raise this question but unless we study the entire story again when we study the entire story in the sanatan dharma explains three levels of reality there is a vedanta reality there is there is the purushartha reality and there is a daiva reality adi daivika adi bhautika adhyatmika adi bhautika is about material history it may not be so important it may not be goal of our life but matter also has certain contribution to make then there is daiva reality from the perspective of the devatas then higher than that there is a adhyatmic reality there is a spiritual reality so vyasadev when he compiled mahabharat or valmiki maharshi when he compiled ramayan they would not only present from one perspective they present from all the perspective the material perspective the word material doesn't fit here the adi bhautika you know the prakriti perspective is a lesson for us to learn in regards to future legacy in this world in samaj in society आदि दैविक 
is the influence of the devatas in people's life and adhyatmika is the spiritual lesson what we learn but the story becomes more interesting exciting full of joy happiness distress when we see it as it is as vyasadeva is given right so when we have a clarity of these understanding then the question is not raised but the discovery happens there may be a pain those who understand the story of abhimanyu they may experience greater pain but along with that pain they will also have a greater clarity about why this is happening abhimanyu was killed by the six maharathis there was no one more than arjuna suffered in regards to his death and he had heard bhagavad gita just recently just 10 to 12 days ago and from no other than lord krishna himself and krishna told arjuna in the bhagavad gita na sochiti na kankshati right brahma bhuta prasanna atmana sochiti na kankshati one who is situated in transcendence or one who is situated in knowledge he does not hanker or lament but if you open the pages of mahabharat there was so much of lamentation experienced by arjun so what do we learn from here knowledge should not and will not kill your sensitivity in regards to your relationship at the same time sensitivity and emotion does not destroy your awareness and alertness they are beautiful combination right so therefore when we take abhimanyu story it's a long story on the 13th or 14th day pandavas were having a greater power you know they were winning the battle so whenever these things happen a losing country a losing political party also they do anything and everything to unsettle the willing party we see that a political reality also it happens what they will do to win themselves to rule they can cause great violence to others so dronacharya was powerful army commander and duryodhan knew how to insult people and after getting insulted this insulted people would increase their commitment to serve people like duryodhan it's very interesting how the combination of master and servant works the brutal master he uses such a policy of obnoxiously abusing his subordinate and surprisingly enough the servants overwork for their abusive master so duryodhan was very very harsh and very ridiculing dronacharya so what are you doing he said either you capture the pandavas specially capture yudhishthir and i will invite him for gambling match and once he comes to the gambling match i will again defeat him and send them back to the forest uh, so they act as if they have a fair fight but at the same time they also find other means of unsettling the people like the pandavas and one of the greatest disadvantage for yudhishthir maharaj you know sometime people are addicted to be good most of the time people are addicted to be bad but there are people who are addicted to be good they are repeatedly exploited by their subordinates by their superiors by their friends by their opponents but still they want to follow the policy of no no i have to respond you don't need to but they are willing to respond 
And what was Yudhishthir Maharaj's policy clear? He said, if they invite me for a gambling match, I will certainly gamble. Now, there is no medicine for this. Krishna was there, Arjuna was there, Bhima were there. They accepted this reality of Yudhishthir. Very interesting. You know, you can't change them except that reality, but create such a situation that they don't have to fall into such a reality. Therefore, Krishna had organized in such a way that Yudhishthira has to be protected all the time. Nobody should attack him. But Dronacharya being the great teacher on behalf of the Pandavas, on uh, behalf of Duryodhana, he created this Chakra Vyuha. Now, Chakra Vyuha, as it suggests, Chakra is not a stationary uh, strategy. It's like chakra, it is constantly moving with a greater speed. The entire army in a synchrony, you know, it is not a circle. You know, it is not just a circle. There are many, many layers of circle. And the outer few circles, their most deadly warriors standing there, not guarding, attacking. The circle is moving like Sudarshan Chakra. They wanting to kill their opponent. So this Sudar, this, this Chakra Vyuha, if it was allowed to stay, it had the power to destroy the Pandava army. And meanwhile, what Dronacharya did as a commander in chief, you know, he instigated the Trigartha brothers and they took a vow called as Samshaptakas. They challenged Arjun. Now the word Samshaptakas basically they are the people they curse themselves. What is their curse? That we are challenging such personality and we will not come back till we kill them or get killed by them. That is the word Samshaptakas. And they had their battleground in a far away place from where Chakra Vyuha has formed. If you go to Kurukshetra, you know, when we talk about Mahabharat battle, we conceive like a football ground, right? You know, there are stadium, maybe 10 times bigger than the football ground. No, the battle, Sonepat, Panepat, Kurukshetra, right? It is large area going up to almost 70-80 kilometers. So naturally, there was no WhatsApp, there is no all these modern gadgets. So wherever you are fighting, you have no access to the fighting what was happening here. So Abhi, uh, Arjuna was chased by this Samshaptakas to far away place so that the war could happen here. So, in the Chakra viewers form, when Yudhishthira Maharaj got to know, he was in great conflict. Because not Bhima, not he himself, Nakula Sahadev knew how to break the Chakra Viva. Only Krishna, Arjuna knew how to break the Chakra Viva, but they were not there. So, when Abhimanyu saw this situation, a very difficult situation. He came forward to Yudhishthira Maharaj. You know, this is the rule of life. When a society or when a state has to progress, sometime they have to sacrifice. Therefore, the concept of Bali Chadana, those who understand Hindi, Bali Chadana offering sacrifice it is not simply a ritual of offering sacrifice sometimes people have to offer themselves you know into the sacrifice of progress so that the community society country family progresses and Abhimanyu realized there is no way our army can be protected unless somebody enters and Abhimanyu was such a boy amongst all the Pandavas, even though he was the son of Subhadra, 
he was the favorite of everybody including draupadi right and the relationship what abhimanyu had with krishna during the pandavas exile abhimanyu stayed in dwarka the five pandavas the upa pandavas they saved they stayed in the kampilya you know the place of uh, our uh, drupad maharaj only kunti the mother of pandava stayed in hastinapur you know always giving them the reminder my son will come here she didn't left that place right so they grew up like that so this abhimanyu was raised by krishna in such a way you know favorite of krishna and abhimanyu because krishna did not get the affection of his uncle in india mama right the mother's brother is very very important they play a very important role in the namakaran ceremony also many many ceremonies the mama play big role and we can see that shakuni shakuni was a greater father to duryodhan than dhritarashtra dhritarashtra was the father like an atm machine go and bang him the money will come out go and bang him the resource will come out right so krishna did not receive any affection from his mama but he did not live you know any stone unturned to take care of abhimanyu to such an extent it is explained in the mahabharat the lord would cleanse a small baby abhimanyu just like a mother cleanses him every part of his body right so there was a great connection between abhimanyu and krishna great connection between arjuna and abhimanyu great connection with subhadra and abhimanyu great connection he was just married so when he offered himself to enter inside the uh, chakra vyuha it was almost known to abhimanyu inside his heart in the heart of his heart yad gatva na nivartante once you enter inside you will not come out officially physically he was telling or i will enter then this people can come from there that people can come from here but in the heart of heart he knew very well i will go i will not come why because we have to go back to the daiva platform in the conclusion of the battle when dhritarashtra either vidura or sanjay or vyasadev were telling the past of every personality in kurukshetra who was abhimanyu who was arjun who was dhritarashtra who was duryodhan all their past was spoken right like duryodhan was a personification of kali he was personification of papa he is not papi there is a difference between being a papi and papa we are all papis you know we are all conditional circumstantial we are not eternally papis you know, there is a difference between you being contaminated and you being a contamination right duryodhan was a personification of papa purusha kali shakuni was personification of dwandva dwapara dwapara means double right in sanskrit there is a nyaya called as go mukha vyagra go mukha go go mukha go vyagra mukha means apparently there is cow also and vyagra also right it cannot be possible looks like cow but there is a fierceness of vyagra tiger right so shakuni was like dwandva duality duality dhritarashtra was part of a gandharva family and abhimanyu we all have to remember in the 10th cant of the bhagavatam when krishna agreed to come in this world he asked all the devatas to accompany him to establish dharma 
right we have discussed this many times that no civilization will survive having a superhero with them when a country depends upon one prime minister when a country depends upon one chief minister when a country depends upon one is officer who is honest hoping that he will turn everything around that is the greatest mistake one could ever imagine everybody has to contribute therefore all the devatas had to come lord chandra when he was asked to send his son he said you know what i cannot send my son and even if he goes i want him to come as early as possible so that is daiva will impact and he gave only 16 years just imagine this battle from chandra's perspective the return of his son celebration for him but from the pandavas perspective it is purely clearly really a disaster in their life so whose perspective is real no there is no clash both perspective are real they will not remember oh abhiman is anyways devata is going back so why should we worry that shows your agyan your tamaha you know desensitized heart like it is explained when people say oh shurpanaka was anyway sent by the devatas you know then uh, mantra was sent by the devatas she had to perform the duty so that ramchandra comes to the forest valmiki maharshi does not play this tape even once only very very remotely in half or one verse he explains this but the true follower of ramayan he may know this aspect but when he reads ramayan he will never say oh shurpanaka is part of that mantra is part of that he will be angry upset he will condemn their character when he was talking about this no? therefore it is explained when we bring the aspect of oh, it is kaliyuga what is expected you know that is this explanation is nothing but tamo explanation right some other looking for escapism so let abhimanyu experience that very subtly he is not he is not hearing it clearly but is forced to do what is ordained by the superior forces but while doing that while doing that not consciously not clearly in his heart what is clear in his heart that i am willing to die for the greater cause is very interesting therefore when we operate in the world we operate very much on the present platform going through all kinds of emotions right and we have to go through all kinds of emotions otherwise we will not operate in this world vedanta when everything is happening by the will of god will not allow us to function only only after the event is done we should reflect before the event we can say whatever i do i'll do by the will of god but when you are operating there ask anybody did arjuna think of krishna when he was shooting arrows even though krishna was just stand, standing in his presence only you know he is standing ahead of arjun arjun is in the higher platform sometime we see the chariot the chariot is shown that arjun and krishna on the same level how will he shoot simple thing the chariot driver is on the lower level and uh, the person is shooting in the higher level right so arjuna can see krishna properly but he is not thinking of krishna he is working on behalf of krishna so when abhimanyu spoke this words to yudhishthir maharaj you can imagine that was like a thunderbolt to yudhishthir so he experienced the conflict of love towards abhimanyu if not sending him loss 
half his entire army and losing the battle. What will we do? How can you take a decision? And Abhimanyu, in one sense, because of his qualification, because of his valor, because of his power, was a natural legacy for the Pandavas, more than other five sons of the Pandavas. You are basically sending your legacy to be slaughtered by the Kauravas. It's a very interesting, you know, your present is getting destroyed. Your present is getting destroyed. What is that? Loss in the war. Or your future is getting destroyed. Abhimanyu is your future. But the future is not possible unless, unless the present is existing. You know, this is such a beautiful, you know, somebody wrote a book called Aesthetic Suffering in Mahabharata. Even the suffering also is extremely aesthetic. There is a beauty. You know, there is a charm. Right when Lord Hanumanji was flying, not flying, he's jumping over the ocean. You know, this, there is a combination of brutality and beauty. You have heard the word Rudra Manohara. Right, the word Rudra Manohara, it's a Bhibatsya, it's, it's, it's Rudra, it's Raudra, you know, but at the same time it is Manohara, captivating, charming. So Abhimanyu, you know, he was so charming, but his decision of going inside the Chakra Vyuha caused a tremor in the heart of Yudhishthira Maharaj. No, his existence shook. You know, there is a conflict between the present and the future. There is a conflict between profit and love. Not profit and loss. Right? And these people, when they love, they love and they are willing to give anything for that love. Loss and profit does not matter to them. Right? But here, loss is not just losing a profit in the business but rather losing an opportunity to rule on behalf of dharma and on behalf of krishna and on behalf of their swadharma from every perspective that would be great loss in such condition what do we say in, in such condition we say oh god you know please like i tell this story to children you know there are two train tracks in one track there are seven boys who are playing seven grown up boys are playing and they are playing on a track where the train generally does not go and there is another track where the train goes but there is one child playing right so now where the seven boys are playing they are playing on a right track where the train generally goes and there is one track where the train does not go but you can drive over because that is also a functioning track but one child is playing. So now the driver has a choice between being truthful and kill seven people and be sensitive, save the seven people and kill one child. Which one will you choose? It's a, it's a number seven or number one. Truth or compassion? And the general answer of the children is Med break lagaunga. I will put a break to the train. Those options don't exist in life. The third option what we create is simply pure imagination. It is non-existing. You only have two options. Either kill seven children or kill one child. Hmm? Some boy told I will put Honk, I'll honk again repeatedly, again and again, again and again. No, that choice, I did never ask that question. This or that, you have only two choices. You don't bring the third choice. Similarly, Yudhishthira Maharaj, imagining the third choice which did not exist for the, Right? Just see how Mahabharata is written. 
you know all these nuances very very deep loss or love nowadays when we ask i that abhiman used to arjuna story when arjuna was asked by krishna you want you want my army or you want me right from the perspective of profit and relationship arjuna was resourceful he said no, i want krishna when i asked these children this question if there is a choice between wanting your mother and somebody wanting to give you 50 lakh rupees what will you choose the small child will say i will choose my mother when you ask this question to 15 year old boy you want your mother or you want 50 lakh rupees hmm? so that is a tough difficult question they say you know what i think 50 lakh rupees makes more practical sense a mother i will i love her afterwards i will choose 50 lakh rupees right all these things go in the mind so abhimanyu when he offered to go in the battlefield yudhishthira maharaj went through complete blank he knew that he will not come abhimanyu that knew that he will not come and and bhima nakula and sahadev drishtadyumna everybody they were promising you enter we will come inside but that is the time when jayadrath jayadrath his desire was about to be fulfilled given by lord shiva one day on the battlefield jayadrath will defeat the four pandavas other than arjun this benediction lord shiva had given him he said you cannot defeat abhiman arjuna but other pandavas you can defeat and that is the place where jayadrat stood waiting for the pandavas to try to get inside as abhimanyu enters right and he completely defeated the pandavas and very interesting who was responsible for this when jayadrat was chased by arjuna and bhima because jayadrat had kidnapped draupadi so then when they they got up you can imagine abhimanyu and the bhima they started chasing jayadra they were very clear abhimanyu was very clear uh, bhima was very clear that he will pulverize him he'll powder him he'll break his bones you know make him like a chutney as he was going there yudhishthira mara said hey but you know don't kill after all he is the husband of our only daughter dushchala then bhima looks behind he said you brother you know every time you stop me from doing something right and bhima also unfortunately was bound by the words he couldn't he couldn't say no to yudhishthira even though he knew that it is not the right thing to hear him he looked at uh, yudhishthira but they chased and jayadrath was found in the hands of bhima and arjun you can imagine no no you are like i wanted to give an analogy but i will not you know somebody was such a dumb you know idiot in the country if he is found by the group of people no abdur this this jayadrath is like a machhad you know jayadrath is like a fly or jayadrath is like a small rabbit and and arjuna and bhima are like an african elephant and a lion and this guy has dared to touch draupadi what will happen to him you know we should do a drama on this just beating jayadrath <laughs> no? right so this abhima my god he pulled him he pulled him from the chariot and he was beating him to such an extent jayadrath was about to lose his life and arjuna reminded him he should have not reminded so arjuna was responsible in one sense stopping bhima from killing jayadrath and when you release such a vulgar enemy jayadrath what was his what was his crime his crime was his kidnapping a married woman against her desire also and showing all his you know arrogance 
you know, he was not understanding whom I am dealing with the Pandavas. Right? So what Chanakya, what Krishna says, Shatru Shesha Asheshataha Such enemy should never be given a chance. And especially somebody is trying to rape. They should be killed. But they let him go. They brought him to Yudhishthira Maharaj. You know, but from there, where did Jayadrat go? Jayadrat went to the Himalayas. And keeping his ego in the forefront. It is very interesting. You can do tapasya with full of ego and still have the power to get the darshan of your Ishtadev. Taking darshan of God is no big deal. It is just like you know, somebody, a wealthy person, through his money, crores of rupees, he has the power to take darshan of Balaji or Srinathji and feel, see, I got all the Mahaprasad to my disposal, I got all the darshan, I stopped everybody coming from darshan, you know, and you feel some satisfaction also. Huh? So Lord Shiva came there and he gave him the benediction also and he told you will not defeat the Pandava all the time except for one day and for Arjun you can never do that. And that is what unfortunately happened. Abhimanyu entered inside, the Pandavas were stopped by Jayadrat. It is almost like the Pandavas are sitting like a spectators. You can imagine the helplessness of Bhim. And therefore, when you see when Abhimanyu, when Bhima, Duryodhana was falling on the ground, what Bhima must have done to him? He trampled upon his head. Why would he not? And Balramji was very upset and Krishna also told Yudhishthira, you know what? Then Yudhishthira Maharaj fortunately supported Bhima and Krishna accepted that. Because all the pain, all the anger, all the injustice what they had experienced by, by Duryodhan and the worst of the crime they had to experience. Draupadi's disrobing was painful and the slaughtering of Abhimanyu right in their presence could not do anything. Just watch there. They saw his valor, you know, Abhimanyu was too much for the entire six Maharati. They were running here and there like a rabbit. Even though they were like lion, it was like a rabbit. Abhimanyu is not like a rabbit. But compared to the six people and having only learning of going inside but not coming out, Abhimanyu fought crazily. Karana was running away. Dronacharya was running away. Kripacharya was running away. And meanwhile, Abhimanyu instantly right in the presence of Duryodhan when Duryodhan's son Lakshman was trying to fight him he didn't even realize when Abhimanyu killed Duryodhan's son Lakshman you know that was such a powerful right and Duryodhan went crazy and that time Karna whoever's are the Karna Bhaktas the Karna you know he goes and asks Dronacharya. He said, hey Acharya, even though Dronacharya and Karna had a strong relationship, they couldn't handle each other. But he goes to Dronacharya because Dronacharya is after all, he is also Karna's teacher for your information. He taught him also. It is absolutely nonsense that Karna did not learn from Dronacharya. Right, he went and asked, hey Acharya, he said, what is, how, how is, how are we going to stop him? This guy is unstoppable, he is going to destroy all of us, he has defeated everybody. And Dronacharya shamelessly told, only way we can defeat Abhimanyu is that go behind him and cut off his armor from behind. If you can do that from behind, then there is some chances for our victory. Dronacharya said this, but he said, I am not going to do that. So basically, he gave the information, but he was not 
willing to take the responsibility of giving that information. I said, I'm not responsible. Whoever does it, they're responsible. But he gave that information. And shameless karana. No? The obnoxious karana. You know, cruel karana who is asking Arjun on the battlefield, hey Arjun, you come from a royal family, you come from Aryan family and my wheel is stuck in the soil, so please do not fight me. You know, once I remove the, uh, remove the wheel, I will come up and fight you. Don't do that. And our dear Arjuna, after all, is a good person. He stopped. He was waiting Karana to remove his wheel. These are all connected stories. Right? Don't miss any point of this. You know, he, these are connected. When he told this to Arjun, and you should see Krishna. Now, I don't understand. Even small, small part of Mahabharat can make a mega movie. Right? Just taking this through two, three parts, connecting part. No, if we get 1000, 2000 crore rupees, we'll only do Mahabharat movies. No other movies are required. Right? So Krishna looked at Karana with great anger and he said, Hey Karana, now you are remembering the rules of battle. What happened when Arjuna, when Abhimanyu was fighting six of you and you brutally killed him from behind? Do you have any shame? Krishna gave the list of everything, the original narrative. Right? And then Karana was looking down. And it is not only Karana was fighting, you know, of the chariot. Arjuna did it on the battlefield. Right? When Arjuna's horses were tired, this was the next day after the, during the killing of Jayadrath, they were completely tired. Krishna told Arjuna, look, our horses are tired, they can't move further and we need to give them water and some massage. You have to get down from the chariot. And Arjun did not call everybody, oh please, 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 no, nobody should shoot me because I am down and I cannot do anything, you know, my horses are tired. You can't give all that excuses. Arjun was down fighting all the big, big warriors, right, because they had to kill Arjuna because Arjuna is going to kill Jayadrath. He never even once said. And Krishna when he released the horses. There is a valor Arjuna fighting. And there is the beauty of Krishna grazing the horses, massaging them, feeding them grass. And Arjuna created a small lake also. So that beautiful atmosphere, Krishna created Brindavan in Kurukshetra. You know, that, that akarshan, that beauty of Krishna made crazy to the people. So they were missing. Right? They didn't know whether to shoot Arjuna to experience the beauty of Krishna. What to do now? Because it's so beautiful. Therefore it is explained Gopi going to Krishna was not Gopi's fault. It was Krishna's attraction. Therefore they were not criminal in running away from their husband. And Krishna took the responsibility of making their husband forget. And when they went home Nobody talked anything about they going away. As if it never happened only. Just see we are going everywhere. Right? So, this Karana goes from behind. One of the shameful act. His life is full of shamelessness only. So, doesn't matter only. So, he goes from behind. He talks about valor. He talks about greatness. He talks about so much. And he actually breaks the armor of Abhimanyu from behind which he had never expected this from the six Maharatis. Right? When the, when the armor fell off and we can imagine Bhim, Nakul, Sahadev, Yudhishthir, Drushtadimna, they are doing their fighting also but also watching this. And our Arjuna is nowhere close to this place. He has no clue what is happening. He is fighting the Samshaptakas, finishing them one for all. Right? And he finished them all. As he finished them all, and here Abhimanyu was slaughtered by the six Maharatis. Eventually, the one of the soldiers 
I forgot who killed him. No, he gave an ultimate blow into the chest of Abhimanyu. You know, the death was brutal in regards to the onslaught made by the six Maharatis. But the brutal what Abhimanyu had created against the Kauravas, that became the turning point of the war. When Arjuna started coming back, he knew in the heart of his heart, there is something wrong. No, His heart was saying something is going wrong. But Krishna is very interesting, he did not say anything. No, Krishna did not speak anything. Krishna spoke little philosophy, he drove. When Abhiman, when Arjun came closer and closer, he did not experience usual reception given by Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu would be there greeting. He would come earlier from the battle. He has fought his war, but he would come little earlier to greet his father, you know, to hear his stories. But Arjun did not see that. And eventually when he came in, what he saw was death of Abhimanyu. And nobody had the guts, the courage, the daringness to inform Abhiman, Arjuna about the death of Abhimanyu, how Abhimanyu was killed. All right? And Yudhishthira Maharaj was feeling so guilty about sending Arjuna's dearest son into the jaws of death. All right? And Krishna, the part of Krishna, the way Krishna plays his role, and Arjuna's outburst in this entire episode. And then he hears the stories of so many great personalities, including Lord Ramachandra, the philosophy spoken to Arjun. You know, the Adhyatmic philosophy spoken to Arjun. We discussed about the Chandra wanting to go, wanting his son to go early. We spoke from the human perspective. And the Adhyatmic perspective. Arjuna was told that after all we are not this body, we are the spirit soul. Whether your Lord Ramachandra's story was also given, even Avatara is time bound in this world. He is timeless in regards to his story. He is timeless in regards to his influence. He is timeless in regards to reciprocating us with his stories and his holy name. But his time bound in the form of Avatar coming to this world. He has to wind up. And therefore, even avatars, they have such humility and especially the human part, Ram and Krishna, they chose to live as if they are like ordinary people. Follow the law of life. You are born, you move like that. That is not their ordinariness. That is their greatness. Right. So they follow that path. And all that story was told to Arjuna. And Arjuna rose from the pain. And there was a different Arjuna from that day onwards. Of course, still the elements of compassion, kindness, my guru Dronacharya was there. But the power what Arjuna showed next day, he took that vow. That this Jayadrath. If he is not dead before the sunset, I will enter into the fire. No, emotions, Arjuna, that is one of Arjuna's character. Like this tears character is, I will go and gamble if they invite me. And Arjuna's character is, I will enter into fire if I don't do. And Krishna slowly fixed it. And that day alone, Arjuna destroyed more than one Akshoyani Sainya of the Kauravas. What a war he fought. And after killing Jayadra, when they were coming back, you should read the Vyas Puja offering made by Krishna to Arjun. Krishna was overwhelmed with Arjun. Right? Glorified Arjun like anything. And if you see the whole story, how much Krishna was involved, did not shoot one arrows. There was a conflict between Yudhishthira and uh, no, there was a, no, there was a, no, there, that was a different day. There was so many challenges for Arjun. The chariot, you know, the, the horses became tired. Then uh, the Bhurishrava story happened. 
and then Bhima had to go elsewhere. So eventually then at the evening when the sun was about to set, you know, still the Pandavas, Arjuna was very far away and Dronacharya wanted to, you know, attack Arjuna and keep the battle like a test match. Draw karo isko. And don't allow Arjuna to go forward only. At that time Krishna told, you know what, he is your guru. So what you have to do, just offer him prostrated obeisances, do a circumambulation and move away from him. And when Arjuna did that, Dronacharya said, hey, what are you doing? How can you do this? And Arjuna said, my guru, I don't fight with my teacher and he went forward. No. So Krishna gave him so many good advice and Arjuna followed all of them because they were logical and reasonable. And after killing, not only killing Jayadrat, Krishna told a story how to kill Jayadrat, how to send two different weapons and let the head of Jayadrat should fall on the uh, lap of his father, Bhradashrava. And he told a story while it's all happening, Krishna is also telling him a story. You know, why this, why his father had done tapasya and then he had told if anybody makes my son's head fall on the ground, their head will split into a thousand parts. So the Kauravas in one sense, for them Arjuna killing Jayadrat or Arjuna entering into the fire was all win-win only. If it was not for Krishna, Arjuna would kill Jayadrat and his head would split into thousand parts. Therefore Duryodhan did not send Jayadrat away from the battle. Jaydrat was saying, I am going now, enough now, you know, I am done, I am going because if I stay here, Arjuna will kill me. So Duryodhan stopped him. Why would he stop? You know, he knew the story also. So Arjuna would be dead either way, but then whom are you dealing with? You know, there is a smart God, he, will not, he does not only play a flute, he also opened the pages of history. Right? He told the story and Arjuna exactly did like that. When they, are, when they are coming back, you know, there can be nobody who is greatest fan in this world, in the other world, other than Krishna of his devotees. You know, he is overwhelmed coming and praising Arjuna like anything. You know, wow, what you did so much. Right? Arjuna comes back to the camp. Right? And in this way, the entire story of Abhimanyu becomes so interesting. Huh? And another principle Krishna is teaching on the battlefield, whether you are Abhimanyu or Arjun, as Krishna told Arjuna in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, if you die, you will achieve great fame. And if you win, you will rule the world. To prove this reality, you know, to prove this reality, it doesn't matter whether Abhimanyu is my nephew, Abhimanyu is son of my great devotee, Abhimanyu is a great human being, Abhimanyu is a nephew of Yudhishthira Maharaj, Abhimanyu is the young husband of Uttara, Abhimanyu is about to be father of Parikshit Maharaj. All these realities are all real, but within this reality, there is one reality, the reality of uncertainty, especially on the battlefield and that can take anybody's life, including the life of Abhimanyu and therefore asking this question, how Krishna did not protect Abhimanyu, that means we have to go back to the basics of Bhagavad Gita. Because if you have chosen this kind of life or if you have chosen life in this world or the life has chosen us in this world, we are part of the duality world. But even in that duality, Abhimanyu did not die like Karana. He did not die like Dronacharya. He did not die like Bhishma Dev. Whether it is Drona, whether it is Karana, whether it is Bhishma, they left this world in regards to battlefield. They all achieved glorious destination but their departure was very, very painful. They didn't want to be there on the battlefield, but they were forced to be on the battlefield. They didn't want to fight against the Pandavas, but they were forced to fight against the Pandavas. They wanted to see, you know, being as the commander-in-chief, give victory to Duryodhan, 
but not killing the Pandavas. Can you imagine how much clashes? Therefore, at some point of time, they themselves revealed the secrets of their own death. Dronacharya and Bhishma Dev. And they said, Bhas ho gaya bhi. And Karna, for your information, when Krishna offered him, you know, what is his position? Who is he? He never offered him Draupadi as his husband. Again, from the principle of uh, Adhyatma and the principle of Daiva, this is one of the most humbug story. Neither it is there in Vyasa's Mahabharat and it doesn't fit into the whole story what Vyasa has spoken to the Pandavas about their connection to Draupadi, the five Indras. No six Indras, five Indras. Right? And what did Karana say? Krishna, I know I will be killed. I know Duryodhana will be destroyed. I see, he gave so many shakunas, you know, the, the signals of the victory of the Pandavas. And Krishna said, and therefore you come, you are the older brother of the Pandavas. They'll be more than happy to take you. But he chose to die. He chose to die. So therefore their death from the battleground may be glorious. But it is a painful death for their own self. But when Abhimanyu was lying on the ground, brutally killed by the Kauravas, there was a smile, satisfaction and fulfillment. You know, from every perspective, from Adhyatmic perspective, he knew that Krishna will be happy with me. Chandra will be happy with me that I am going at the age of 16. And my army will have a great advantage because I have destroyed the Chakra Vyuha and my father will do the needful. Painful. So you ask Abhimanyu, rather than asking somebody, how can Krishna not protect? Ask Abhimanyu, do you deserve, do you want this kind of death on the battlefield again? That Veer Abhimanyu will say, not once. Every time when there is Mahabharat, I want to come as Abhimanyu and do the same thing again, again and again forever. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, truly respect the valor and sacrifice of Abhimanyu to protect Dharma. Uh, like to invite questions. Uh, yes, we have a few people who have raised their hands. Uh, So, Prabhuji, there's a question that uh, uh, Duryodhan, uh, even though he abused uh, the people who were on his side, they still were loyal to him. Uh, how do we understand this? Yeah, the psychologically, you know, what is that Stockholm Syndrome? No? They, the psychologist, they figured out recently. The Stockholm Syndrome is that you become loyal to those who abuse you. You know, they control you psychologically, physically from every perspective. And, and Duryodhana was very expert in that. Extremely expert. Right? Karana tells this to Krishna. People should read very carefully. Worse to worse Krishna than Karana's conversation. Karana is telling Krishna. And that's what Krishna became so angry at the time of, at the time of Karana. There was no sympathy. You know, Krishna was like that person, like, you know, there was encounter specialist in Mumbai, uh, started by Arvind Namdar and Riboro. You know, some of the, most of the hardcore criminals, they would capture them and then they would tell, okay, now you go, you know, we are releasing you and then shoot them from behind. Right? So now imagine Krishna was extremely angry with the with the attitude of karana no like so much of helplessness for no good reason and this man telling krishna you know what krishna duryodhan is a mitra drohi mitra drohi means he is actually drohi of the very mitras he is disrespectful to his superiors and he neglects the words of the intelligent people, the Brahmanatva. He has nobody as his friend. The friend Karana is telling his Mitra Drohi, then who is Karana then? 
कर्ण इज कैप्चर्ड बाय दुर्योधन थ्रू अ साइकोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल एंड नॉट ओनली दैट ही सेज कृष्ण टेल्स यू दिस्ट विल ऑफर यू द किंगडम दुर्योधन कर्ण एंड यू विल हैप्पीली सर्व अंडर यू in this way the entire war will stop the purpose is to stop the war if duryodhan is really your friend he'll be happy seeing that you rule and then the pandavas i guarantee they will be happy to work under you the war will stop you know how can anybody with a good sense ever speak good about karna we should do 12 netflix series on karna nastiness of karna right and then what did he say he told krishna if you give me the kingdom dear krishna i will hand over it to duryodhan you know it is just like a very very talented people having great capacity to contribute to the country they say with all our efforts we will offer the role of pradhan mantri to a dumb person you know who i am talking about so what will you do with such people right so therefore therefore this is what mahabharata is teaching the power of duryodhan to control and the powerlessness which is consciously developed by people like karna so karna represents that character victim consciousness and therefore it is but natural the modern society will always sympathize with such people no whether it is tamil dramas whether it is kannada drama whether it is telugu drama whether it is marathi you know mrutyunjay are is not mrutyunjay he is mrutyu every time when he is victorious also on the battle it's a syndrome it's a karana syndrome we should when we write our indian psychology we should take the characters from mahabharat and give that name oh, you are going through karana psychology so the the patient should understand oh, i am being i am allowing myself to be victim and i am allowing myself to be abused by people who have no good wishes for me you read in the mahabharat you will understand thank you thank you very much prabhu ji that's quite a complex emotion uh aruna ji can you please ask your question hari krishna prabhu so i you were mentioning about how while attacking jayadrath uh, he should not be forgiven because of all the atrocities the kauravas did for toward um, uh, draupadi and all but at the same time the same draupadi forgave the uh, killer of uh, her own sons so how do we understand when to forgive and forget forgive. and when not to yeah so you know here we have to see krishna you know he is it's his character is uh, is he harmonizes between beautiful sweet flute playing and his thunderbolt of chakra sudarshan chakra you know he is able to harmonize that very beautifully and therefore he was the one who told arjuna to kill karna he was the one who told to kill jayadrath because that was the reality but when it came to draupadi in regards to draupadi wanted to forgive you know the sons of uh, son of jayadrath we have to understand jayadrath sorry the, uh, ashwatthama you know it's very interesting his personality also whenever karna and whenever duryodhan spoke ill about the pandavas he would stand by the pandavas he had a great appreciation of yudhishthir and arjun ashwatthama very interesting character wherever you would see that oh they are being afflicted he would stand by them and when the kauravas were afflicted for their own fault suddenly his heart became swelled with emotions oh i can't stand it i'm going to do something for the with my duryodhan very very strange character of ashwatthama right so therefore krishna also he killed jayadrath but he allowed ashwatthama to stay for 
more than 3000 years. Not only Ashwatthama was made to stay, he was given greater punishment in one sense. You can imagine 3000 years, no association of anybody. Body stinking from every part. You can't interact with anybody. And you, you cannot stay in one place, loitering from one place to another place. Which is preferable, death or living like this? So Krishna plays a master stroke. He fulfilled the desire of Draupadi. Because that was a deep desire. He, you know, I have seen everybody becoming childless. Gandhari became childless. She became childless. Subhadra became childless. And now Dronachar has already passed away and his wife will be already husbandless and I can't see her being childless. So Draupadi's compassion came only from the mother's perspective. Another thing is that a person like Draupadi for her the crime of attempted disrobe is connected to her dignity. And the death of her children is connected to her pain, her heart. You know, one can actually deal with the heart by developing superior character of compassion. But in regards to dignity, you know, it is very difficult. So Draupadi chose that and Krishna apparently fulfilled it but gave him the punishment what he deserved. And interestingly, this very Ashwatthama you read in the Bhagavatam, eventually according to Madhva Sampradaya also, according to Bhagavatam also, he will become a future Vyasadev. Huh? Very nice. That's, that is, that is an, so what again, what do we learn from here? Whether the most horrible crime done by Ashwatthama is not an eternal reality. It is still a time bound reality. Maybe painful time 3000 years. But still that 3000 year compared to eternal reality is like few days, few months. You know, just like when we are standing hungry, waiting for a bus to come because we have to go to eat somewhere. Right? That, the 10 minute late bus, 15 minute bus late and then you got stuck in the traffic jam. It sounds like eternality even though it's just few hours. That is the power of time of uh, relativity of time. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, uh, Adarshi, can you please ask your question? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Please accept my Dharma Puna. Prabhuji, I was, I had one question like, uh, how can we also be fair, fearless and uh, strong like Abhimanyu in the service of Prabhupada? Hare Krishna. No, that is again, it is not. It are not simply in sentiments and emotions. Abhimanyu was trained like that. He had that disposition also. Right? Fearlessness is born out of capacity also and training and education also. You know, you can't send anybody and everybody to the battleground. Not many will survive. Many people go. I know so many stories where people go out of emotion. Within three days, they run away from there because they can't handle the training. No, because... Our valor is not born out of simply emotion. Our valor is born out of our sanskaras and our upbringing and our training and education. So therefore, there is a specific valor speaking the truth. That is one kind of valor. But not necessarily they will be a good soldier. A good soldier, extremely valorous, but if you call them to a stage to speak, they may not be able to speak only. There they are very... You know, the you know, stage fear will be there. So similarly, you have to understand who you are, what is your disposition and what is your training. It is not just sentiment. So how can we be fearless? You know, if you try to be fearless without proper education and training, that becomes counterproductive. If you are fearful in certain aspect, it's okay to be fearful. That is a one of the human qualities, right? And there are, if you are trained in certain aspect to be fearless and slowly, slowly you understand how to progress from there to other part. It's a journey. Arjuna, Abhimanyu was trained 
He maybe he did not get the complete training. He only got trained how to enter into Chakravya. And Krishna became silent. And the story is there. The Subhadra wanted to hear about. Generally a Garbhavati Stri doesn't ask about I want to hear about battle. Have you heard anybody? You know, but she insisted Krishna I want to hear. And Krishna what he did was interestingly rather than telling her story. He explained all the technicalities of different uh, war formation. So when he is speaking about the Chakra Vya, Subhadra Pap, she is very simple, sweet, you know, affectionate girl. She went to sleep. But there was a baby inside. You know, Krishna's words, Arjuna's seed, there is a fire and he was so alert, he was listening everything. Like how Parikshit Maharaj saw Krishna in the womb. Or like Shukadeva Goswami heard the Bhagavatam, right? Sitting on the another tree while our Parvati Mata, once in a while she went to went off dozing because Bhagavatam also has a lot of Veda philosophy. Right? So then Krishna stopped. He said, you will only hear of going inside. I will not tell you coming outside. Why? Some people say Krishna is fearing just like there will be karma for him. Just like he was killed by, he killed his uncle Abhimanyu also killed. There are people who have written like that. You know, but this is the story that he had to stay for some time. No. So therefore, we should not be sentimental in regards to be valorous. We have to study ourselves and learn slowly, slowly, you know, to be valorous. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, Divya Ji, can you please ask your question? Uh, uh, Prabhuji, how we, uh, 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 we, how we see, like, uh, Karna has a background of, like, he was a demon in previous life. But how, uh, like, pure devotee like Mahajan Bhishma Pitama, even after becoming pure devotee, he, uh, he is citing, uh, I mean, he fought on the side of Duryodhana. Again, his story you see from all the three perspectives, you know, from the transcendental perspective, you know, being Mahajan, Krishna never had, you know, any ill uh, feeling towards Bhishma. Krishna was only angry with Bhishma's decision. This is very interesting again. What Bhishma represents, a very good person large hearted a great spiritual teacher making mistake in regards to management so krishna punished bhishma's manage, management decision not he himself it's a great lesson to learn if you have a great devotee but he makes a wrong decision about whatever it is finances temple funding or anything you know takes a wrong decision Generally what happens, we say, oh, he's a devotee, therefore we cannot punish. And we continue the legacy of bad management. And there are some other, they said, how can you do like this being a devotee? So they question his character rather than his decisions. You have right to question his decisions. But you cannot question his character. So this is the beauty of Krishna. Krishna is the precision. He said you made a management uh, wrong decisions and you are still wanting to continue with that wrong management choices. So therefore you need to be fired. And Krishna told Arjun, fire him. So suspending or removing from the job on the battlefield of Kurukshetra is different from a company or a temple. That doesn't mean that Krishna fired Bhishma Dev from his relationship. So what do we learn from this? On a human platform, a devotee does not necessarily mean a good manager. There are two different things. And sometimes we try to mix it up. And sometimes we say it is Krishna's will. It is yes. But when you are studying the story, you know, you read Mahabharata again. And therefore, when at the time of Bhishma passing away from this world, 
Krishna was meditating. And Yudhishthira Maharaj asked, very sweet. He asked, Krishna, if you don't mind, can I ask you a private question? You know, I want to know whom are you meditating upon? If it is not intruding into your privacy, can you tell me? And Krishna had a smile. And he told, my dear Yudhishthira, I am meditating upon that person who has no mala. There is no contamination. No? Right. What an amazing, you know, the nuances here. You know, therefore, whenever you see if somebody, fantastic devotee, I'll say simple, you know, very, chants very nicely, but then there is a nice festival is happening and is singing. I remember one devotee, very good japa chanter, but a horrible singer from the perspective of singing techni technicality. That some guests were coming and one of the leaders, you know, he came and told him, stop him and give it to this devotee, a good singer. And he told me to do that. I have to do that seva, right? So then I went and stared at him. I said, move on. This person will sing. So there was a big discussion in our, in our class. You know, who is better qualified to sing? A devotee who is greater in sincerity, has a greater depth in spiritual understanding or somebody who is a simply a good singer and also is a devotee. Right, I said, this is a story, Baba. This is the reality. It is just like asking, do you choose a good doctor who talks sweetly or you choose a doctor who is supposed to be known as the best surgeon in regards to heart? Will you choose a person with a good heart but not known to be a very great surgeon or somebody who is little ruthless with people but he knows the art of performing good surgery? Simple logic. So Krishna is no such confusion only. He keeps these two things separately. Management, Bhishma's life was full of fault. But his relationship, his transparency, his purity, you know, and his, his devotion to Lord Krishna and the Pandavas is unquestionable. So he was punished for wrong management. Basically, ask him, okay, you move on, let us bring somebody else. So Bhishma did not curse Krishna, Bhishma did not tell the Pandavas, rather he said, remove me from management. I can't remove myself, somebody has to take me away from this management. And Arjuna with great tears in eyes. Read that episode, how beautiful it is. If people understand this concept, there is no confusion only. You know, but people are stuck. I want to remain this and this only because I have served so many years. So then you have to shoot them with greater vigor, better weapons. You know, while crying tears. Hmm? Right. So much, so many lessons Mahabharata teaches. Does it make sense? Uh, yes. Then we, when we say the Mahajana Yene Gata Sapantha, then how we relate this with the Kama? Yeah, Mahajana and Gata Sapantha specifically, Bhagavat is dealing with their devotional attitude. There's, it's a beautiful attitude. You know, Bhishma is not telling Krishna or Pandava, I did so much devotion to Krishna, all my decision failed only, what is this? So, devotional service does not guarantee you to be professionally expert. And professional failure should not question your devotion to Krishna. You know, what happens? People expect, because I chant, I attend Mangal Arati nicely, therefore I should be naturally giving a good class. Mm. You may have a good content, but you may not be a good speaker. Mm. Hmm? Right. You may have a nice devotion, but you can't say, because I am a very nice devotee, therefore I will go and cook. My God, a good devotee, if he is not a good cook, don't eat from his hand. Mm. Now, if you are interested in you know, having a satisfied meal, if you want to satisfy them, then suffer eating a bad food. But if you want to be satisfied eating properly because you eat less, you know, then you tell, okay, you cook, I don't want you to cook because you don't know how to cook. Very simple. There is these two things are different. No? So therefore, the character of Bhishma is very beautiful. He represents the sing harmony between greatest of the devotion 
but the most you know making so many blunders in regards to decisions of life whether it is not marrying and all based upon offering his heart no agenda so it shows selflessness is not synonymous to making right decisions no need to tell i am so selfless therefore whatever decision i make you have to see my intention no sir intention doesn't matter here right decision matter here intention is related to devotion but strategy is related to management now there is no question only you know transcendentalism is okay as long as you are situated in the adhyatmic atmosphere but along with that when you are situated in management you can't give that example no no you know this is what what can be done how much can you tolerate that it's loss of money it's loss of faith it's loss of time it's again rewinding everything and again redoing in the name of satisfying somebody's good intention a bad manager you are losing on money wealth and everything else so therefore bhagavad gita and our kurukshetra teaches remove them with your tears in eyes you know right let there be tears arjuna is crying but arjuna had to shoot him and krishna will come at the time of death you know giving his darshan and bhishma never in fact he told draupadi you know my blood is full of contamination and your your husband has removed it therefore i am able to answer so it only increases your affection for bhishma then proji how we we can avoid uh, taking wrong decision in our own life you know therefore if you are if you depends again what is your expertise which what part you know again another principle of practicing spiritualist a spiritual feels that i am also all rounder all rounder very few in india in cricket also after kapil dev not many all rounders have come who have constantly performed in the world itself you see in ordinary game like cricket you know there are you can count on fingers either you are a good batsman good bowler or a wicket keeper right so in a small field like a sports the world even with all the technological advancement does not has not produced such you know very integrated all rounders so how can somebody one who has known chartered accountancy or one who knows uh, being a medical doctor just because he adds the tag of a spiritual practitioner can get involved in every aspect and take a decision you know that's like an assumed all rounder such people are almost like founder of vasudev only no remain vasudev das don't become you know if you are not an all rounder no so that is the first principle a devotee does not mean that he knows everything we may quote this shloka one who knows krishna knows everything but there is another verse which says one who knows everything realizes i don't know anything lord chaitanya he said i know krishna he said how do i know krishna he said krishna is like a mountain you know krishna when you come closer kaviraj goswami explain the nature of love is that when you are in close relationship especially with lord then you realize how much less you know so one who says i know krishna he should know that he knows so less and less as much it tries to know him more and more you realize you know more uh, more uh, you start knowing more and more about yourself that you know so much less and less so there is no question of becoming unnecessarily all rounder you ruin people's life i ruin people's life people ruins others life also thank you thank you prabhu ji thank you divyanita prabhu ji for your nice questions uh, prabhu ji can we take some more questions yeah i'll take one question okay uh, jadi prabhu uh, can you please uh, unmute yourself yeah thank you so much thank you so much going prabhu for once again you know enlightening on the aspects of mahabharat and uh, this topics wherein our thoughts really you know can reach now my one question uh, which comes out and has been bothering me a lot and even a few of my friends have asked about this it's like why yudhishthir maharaj being a personification of dharma you know even though he has led uh, all the pandavas rightly throughout his life why did he uh, firstly in the place has an addiction to 
this uh, gambling number one number two even for that matter even if he has that he goes to the extent of you know uh, putting on his brothers himself and as well as to the other extent extreme extent of putting on his wife on that uh, dice so it's it's very difficult to understand uh, you know and contemplate uh, that why this could have happened which apparently appears to be one of the bigger causes of mahabharat war side you know elaborate it's a it's a huge it's a, uh... basically again we have to see from three perspective the the daiva perspective the adhyatmic perspective and the and the material perspective the bhautik perspective if you read very carefully krishna chastises yudhishthira maharaj during the battle between duryodhan and bhima wherein yudhishthira maharaj said you choose any one of us and whoever you defeat you know you will get the kingdom then krishna said oh krishna told yudhishthira maharaj almost you rascal you know you have condition to gamble and i think the sons of pandavas are meant to be in the forest only what if he had chosen somebody else what if he chooses uh, nakul to fight the battle is over right so yudhishthira maharaj had the conditioning of taking risk which is beyond the ability to handle it from the physical perspective but if you only see that then you will end up becoming an offender of yudhishthira because we will only know the superficial story a superficial story of yudhishthira maharaj gambling is for us hmm? but you have to go into deeper aspect of the concept of dyuta only dyuta is not simply a gambling match a dyuta is an interesting concept in life no the concept of risk management and risk taking right duality unless you have the courage to do something which is not within your conceivable idea not all the time but sometime life will not progress only right and yudhishthira maharaj represents whom yamaraj and there was a need for very big cause he became a fulcrum and and then 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 i think we are going to deal with that yudhishthira maharaj gambling in one of the talks it's a long long discussion but on the platform of daiva and adhyatma yudhishthira maharaj had to do this and on the physical platform 100% it was wrong it doesn't matter who you are if you make a mistake you have to suffer for it and yudhishthira maharaj had to face draupadi's onslaught day in day out for gambling she would chastise him bhima would chastise him but he stayed with them taking and getting purified by the pandavas only arjun nakul sahadev would not chastise but bhima and draupadi they gave him so much krishna would have killed the pandavas also one great poet says the only reason the pandavas were protected for doing what they did to draupadi because draupadi is mangalya hmm? draupadi is mangalya became mangalya is the mangal sutra nowadays people don't even know what mangal sutra is you know that was the mangalya which protected otherwise krishna made everyone go through the pain of punishment whether it is bhishma drona kripacharya you know dhritarashtra all the 100 kauravas bhurishrava everybody has to be punished because they had promised including the pandavas but they were protected because they were related to draupadi so krishna punished the pandavas differently just like how uh, ashwatthama was made to suffer for 3000 years so that 12 years plus 1 year it was draupadi gave all of them royally purified them so much and saw them also nicely so we'll stop here thank you for your kind attention we'll thank you very much prabhu ji uh, for this very thoughtful conversation there's enough for us to think throughout the week uh, till we meet next tuesday at 7 o'clock to discuss uh, the most exciting killing of karna Thank you very much Hari Krishna